Hello everyone, hope you enjoyed the little mess it around here, I decided to go steampunkish with this one, since we're going way, way back in time here, oh, 2000, oh 1995, <laughs> all right. But anyway, as a continuing on with our reading of case laws dealing with filming of police officials and other government officials, we are going back in time, back in the 95. I think this is actually one of the first cases that really touched on the legality of filming police and their public duties. And um, as is, there's two cases for the Ninth Circuit. The first one uh, we're looking at is 40... Uh, Fortis uh, v. City of Seattle, and then there's another one, if I feel there's enough time, I'll cover, which would be James Adkins v. Paul uh, Subba, here, whoops, actually I should be pulling up this one here, and this one, the difference between these two cases is, and I'm noticing my mic is peeking out, so let me fix that here, um, uh, how should I put it, let me double check here, is it peaking? Not anymore, okay, good. Um, when it comes down to it, this one uh, here happened out in the territories, uh, like I think this one specifically happened in Guam, while this one of course happened in Washington. So we'll probably, uh, if I don't cover it, I'll cover it in a different live stream. Pretend like the button is a cop with no firearms, no corrupt backup, and you'll have a... Th I wonder what the hell that comment is referencing to. I better go look at the archives here. Let's see. Hit the like button. Oh, you're talking about people uh, wanting to hit the, getting people to hit the like button. But anyway, since we have already gone through all of this, uh, well, the preamble of all of this, let us go ahead and get started. And I better get my uh, choice of drinks ready here, so this way I can keep my throat somewhat uh, cleared and all that stuff. Ah, dang it. Let's see here. There we go. All right, we shall get started here. Oh, no, 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 you don't need to be foaming. Ah, dang it. I'll have to clean that up a little bit later. Don't read my comments, BB. If you make it a super chat, I'll definitely read it. So that's the, my little re personal requirement there. Okay, getting started. And now I got the... Uh, some drink all over my hands here, dang it. Oh well. It'll dry off, but be sticky. 
<clears throat> All right. This case arises from the alleged interference by police officers of the city of Seattle with Jerry Edmund Forrest's attempt on August 5th, 1990 to videotape public protest march. Forrest, who appear, uh, apparently considered himself part of the protest, had volunteered to videotape the demonstration for local, local, uh, local television production. Presumably for broadcast on public access channel. Among the subjects were the activi uh, activities of the police officers assigned to work the event. Not surprisingly, the police themselves became targets of the protest and were subject to rude and profane insults. Generally, police re uh, reacted to the treatment in a calm and professional manner. But the record suggests that some of these officers were not pleased with Fortis' actions. And that one officer in particular attempted to physically to physically dis to dissuade for his from his mission. At the end of the day, in the separate incident, a different officer arrested for this when he attempted to videotape some sidewalk bystanders against their wishes. For his was charged with violating a Washington state privacy statute. Washington Revised Code 9.73.030 which forbids the recording of private conversations without the consent of all parties. Fortis spent all night in jail, well, the night in jail. On October 1st, 1990, the charges against Fortis were dismissed on motion of the prosecuting attorney. Quite interesting. Subsequently, Fortis brought a civil rights lawsuit against the city of Seattle and eight the Seattle police officers Fortis sought damages from the officers in their individual capacity pursuant to 42 U.S.C. 1983 for interfering with his First Amendment right to gather news and for arresting him without the request of probable cause for allegedly violating Washington Revised Code 9.73.030. He also invoked a supplemental jurisdiction in order to seek damages from the officers in their individual capacities for violations of the state tort law. For his sought the permanent inju uh, injunctive relief against the city of Seattle and officers forbidding the uh, forbidding enforcement of Washington Code against the amateur journalists such as himself and sought damages from the city of Seattle. Ooh. Shout out to the UK. Thank you for that. Continuing on, permanent injunctive relief against the Seattle uh, city of Seattle and the for officers forbidding enforcement of Washington Code against amateur journalists such as himself and sought, sought damages from City of Seattle pursuant to 1983 and supplemental state tort claims. Fortis demanded attorney's fees pursuant of 42 U.S.C. 1988. Hmm, that's a new one. Let us do a quick research on this one. What is a 1988? Got a little bit of beer there. Okay. Did it say which specific one? No, it didn't. <clears throat> um, applicable statutory and common law attorney's fees. Okay, so this is just uh, dealing with uh, what it would cover specifically. And what was that specific? Sh oh, okay, so a $2 shout out to the UK. Thank you, Joshua, on that uh, super chat. Continuing on here. Back to the reading. The defendant moved for summary judgment, and Freud's moved for partial summary judgment. The district court granted the uh, defendant's motion for summary judgment as Freud's pre-arrest 1983 and state tort claims finding no evidence that were, would permit rational jury to find that he was assaulted. Freud's v. Seattle, uh, Washington Code uh, 1993. The district court also granted the defendant's motion for summary judgment as Freud's damages claims pursuant to 1983 state law torts, concluding that the individual police officers were qualified, uh, qualifiedly immune and the city non-liable. Dang, so this incident happened back in 1990 and it took up until 1995, well, yeah, 95, if I correctly, was that? Yeah, 95 to get a judgment in favor of filming police here. So let us continue. The district court declined to afford for us the injective relief he had requested. Instead, the district court so Dang it, that is something I'm... Duck, duck, go, can you help me on this one? I have never heard of this word and I know it's Latin. 
Susapona. Do they have a pronunciation key here? Latin for his, her, it's their own accord. Su moto on emotion. Hmm. Ah. Uh, I can't believe they still use Latin in these things. Um, awarded the phrase declarative relief, which he had not requested, declaring that Washington Code. 973-030 does not prohibit videotaping or sound recording of conversations held in a public street within the hearing of a person not participating in the conversation by means of readily apparent recording device. After entry in the declaratory judgment, Fortius requested attorney's fees against the city of Seattle, but not against the defendant police officers. The defendants requested attorney's fees as well on the grounds that Fortius suit had been frivolous as to certain individual officers. Sarah is awesome. Beep beep. I. Ah, uh, yes, Sarah is awesome. Thank you, Joshua. Continuing on here. <clears throat> Let's see here. Defendant's fees. Frivolous. October 13th, 1993. The uh, district court issued two unpublished orders. The first granted attorney's fees to Fortius and uh, as a privileged party under 42 U.S.C. 1988, but only in the amount of 20% of the fees Fortius had requested. The second denied attorney's fees to the defendants. Both parties appeals appealed to the district court order. The city of Seattle and the individual defendants appealed to the district court's awarded declaratory relief, awarded uh, award of attorney's fees to Fortius as to prevailing party and denial of the defendant's attorney's fees. For his appeal to the district court, the grant of summary judgment to the city and the individual officers and the amount of attorney's fees awarded to him. We affirm in part, rever uh, part, reverse in part, and vacate in part, and remand. Oh boy, this could get complicated. <clears throat> Liability and damages. The district court based on uh, based some of its... Uh, Dispositive rulings on the conclusion of uh, that the recorded contain well record contain no evidence that would permit the rational jury to find that Fortius was assaulted. Uh, Fortius, okay, reference into the case. We respectfully disagree. As we read uh, read the record, a genuine issue of material fact does exist regarding whether Fortius was assaulted and battered by the Seattle police officers in an attempt to prevent or dissuade him from exercising his First Amendment right to film. Matters in a public interest. For he testified in a uh, disposition that his camera was deliberately and violently smashed into his face by Officer Elstrud while Fortis was publicly gathering information with the uh, with it during the demonstration. Although the co uh, cooperation is not required to establish a genuine issue of material fact, when the issue is established by sworn testimony, Fortis alleged. Allegations is nonetheless corroboration by his videotape, which is in record and which is have we have reviewed. Thus, as Officer El uh, Ellister, we, the matter did not merit a grant of summary judgment with the respect, of, uh, respect either to the First Amendment claims under 42 U.S.C. 1983 or the supplemental state law claims of assault and battery. These claims merit a trial. That's the guy ID. Uh, okay, I guess that's not actually directed to me. <clears throat> As of the 1983 claim stemming from Fortius' arrest, we agree that the district court, uh, that the officers uh, are entitled to qualified immunity from the suit for damages. Act up, betray uh, Portland v. Begley, 9th Circuit, 1993. The relevant facts are undisputed. While Freud was videotaping people on the street of Seattle, he was simultaneously, uh, simultaneously audio recording them as well. Prior to arresting Freud, an officer asked him whether the video camera was recording voices and warned him that Washington State statute forbade recording pri uh, uh, private conversations without consent. Freud refused to stop videotaping two boys after an adult retrie uh, adult relative supervising them asked him to stop and complain to the police. The police officers also asked Freyus to stop, but he refused. He was then arrested for violating Washington Code. All of the time, um, at the time Freyus arrest, whether the, and under the circumstances, uh, conversations in public streets could be deemed private within. 
Love you guys. We are family. Play the song in your minds. Hmm. Maybe I'll play it later. Uh, well, wait. I have to see if that's copyrighted. Anyway, continuing on. <clears throat> in public street, uh, streets could be deemed private within the meaning of the privacy statute was not yet settled under Washington state law. Under the facts marshal pursuant to the motions for summary judgment, a reasonable officer could have believed Fortius was recording private conversations in violation of the statute. The evidence before the district court supports a claim that the officers arrested Fortius for con uh, committing in their presence what they believed was a misdemeanor. Accordingly, all the individual police officers um, police officer defendants are entitled to qualified immunity with respect to Fourier's 1983 damage claims relating to his arrest. We also affirm the district court decision granting summary judgment of Seattle, City of Seattle dismissing it from the 1983 damage claims. Fourier's failed to show that the City of Seattle was a culpable by virtue of poli uh, policy statement or in its regulation or decision officially adopted by promulgating the uh, by Seattle that was itself unconstitutional. Referencing to several other cases. Um, Fortius also failed to show that any Seattle police uh, policy or any decision by the government authorization uh, de authorized decision maker was the moving force behind any deprivation of his constitutional rights. Referencing to Pimble v. C City of Connecticut, 1986. And this is Monol, New York City Department of Social Services, 1978. Because of our opinion reinstated officer Elister as a defendant in the case, however, we vacate and remand that the district court, uh, the issue of whether the Seattle can be held vicariously liable under the state law for 40th state law tort damages claims against officer um, Elister. <clears throat> Might as well take a drink. What do you guys think so far? Quite the back and forth discussion in this one. T Mac, I am your host tonight, Ma. Quite the conversations we got going on here. Uh. Okay. Sing it, Bunny. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not good at singing. I'm de uh, tone deaf, so that wouldn't really work too well. Who's the silent citizen guy? I never heard of him. That's true. We never did hear him. He was too silent for us. Oh, Joshua, play it now. Uh, play it now for silent. Now, let me see if it's uh, copyrighted real fast here. Play it now for silent. Uh, do, 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 do. Is that an actual song? I love you. Uh... Oh, I know what I can play. The reason we're smiling is because. Oh, too. Of course. Love. I love you. You love me. We're a happy. With a great <laughs> All right, there we go. I forgot that was actually a Barney song, so. <clears throat> I read fast? Well, this one seems to be actually a lot shorter, so we'll probably dive into the other case shortly. Anyway, <clears throat> here we go. Declaratory and injunctive relief. The city of Seattle argues the district court should not have granted declaratory relief because Fortius was lacking in standing, and Fortius never served at the Attorney General of Washington State with a copy of his complaint. We vacate the district court's grant of declaratory relief because the procedure resulting in the reward was flawed. Hmm. So it turns out there was some issues with the procedure in its entirety. Oh boy. See how things, uh, not doing things right can fuck things up. Alright, continuing on. First, the city contends the declaratory relief was unwarranted because no case or controversy existed, and therefore the district court lacked subject uh, matter jurisdiction. Seattle also argues that Furious did not have standing. We disagree with the city. 
At the time Furius was arrested, and at the time the district court issued its order, the highest court in Washington had not and still has not interpreted Washington uh, Revised Code for, uh, to permit recording of audible conversations among private citizens, uh, citizens on public streets. Fortius was, and still is, uncertain and insecure, insecure regarding his right vel non to vi, uh, videotape and audiotape private persons on public streets, noting that Fortius says he will continue to particip participate in such activities. We are unable to conclude from the record that the circumstances culminating to his arrest no longer are a brooding presence which cast an adverse effect on his legi uh, legi uh, legitimate interest as a citizen of the United States. Headwaters Incorporated v. Bureau of Land Management, 9th Circuit, 1989. Quoting another case. Okay. We are satisfied that under the facts of this case, they as they exist existed during the time of litigation in district court, for it is sufficiently dis demonstrated the existence of concrete controversy. Furthermore, in case concerning the constitutionality of state criminal statute, all that is required for an award of declaratory relief is the plaintiff show a genuine threat of enforcement of disputed state criminal statute. Steve, uh, Stiefel v. Thompson, 1974. Thus, assuming the declaratory relief as an issue was properly th before the district court, Fortis had a standing to be eligible for such relief pursuant to principle... Uh, dang it. Throwing a lot of big words at me. Enunciate. Enunciate. I should have figure that one out. Enunciated and stifle. The city next argues the declaratory judgment was defective because it was awarded without service of the proceeding on Washington State Attorney General in violation of Washington State statute. In order to suit in order in a suit challenging the Washington State statute, Washington Revised Code 724-110. Play some more Barney. Oh, you want me to play some more Barney? Well, maybe I'll play some more Barney at the end of all of this. Uh, dang it. I'm clicking on the wrong tab here. <laughs> That's why. Ah, uh, yes, Joshua. Maybe I should make the chat stay up a little bit longer. I'll have to fix that a little bit later. <clears throat> Continuing on. Uh, okay. Washington Revised Code 7.24.110 provides that the Attorney General shall be served with a copy of the proceeding and be entitled to be heard. We disagree the City of Seattle that the state notice statute cannot uh, can be construed to impose a duty on federal court. The 11th Amendment of the United States Constitution would bar, bar federal court jurisdiction if Furious sought to sue the state of Washington, although the state of Washington may waive the uh, protection of the 11th Amendment jurisdiction bar by passing statute consenting to be sued. A statute consenting to uh, to suit in state court does not constitute consist, uh, consent to suit in federal court. Florida Department of Health and Rehab Services versus Florida Nursing Home Association, 1981. And then Kinnicott Copper Corp v. State Tax common i'm not sure what that is 1946 thus even if washington revised code 7.24.110 were a statute consenting to suit it would could not be construed to require joinder of state in for uh Fordian suit in federal court <coughs> jurisdiction arguments holy cow i bet that's going to be quite the read if i went through all that we do agree with uh Thr uh, thrust of St Seattle's argument, however, the state of Washington could waive the 11th Amendment protection by voluntarily appearing and defending on the merits. Ascado State Hospital v. Ciclo uh, I'm not even going to try that, 1985, and Clark v. Bernard, 1983. In the statute in which the city uh, relies certainly in the manifest decision of the state that its attorney general has strong interest in defending the state statutes in court. Voluntarily appearance, and I forgot to mention, okay there, 
uh, voluntary appearance by the state statutes assume. However, the state has been adequately notified of the pendency of the suit and this particip uh, the particular matters in the, at this issue. <clears throat> Here, the district court never expressly informed the parties that it might render the declaratory judgment the parties argued their motions for summary judgment on the basis that the only injunctive relief and damages were at issue. The district court never indicated otherwise during the oral argument. Subsequent to the hearing on the motions for summary judgment, the district court, Suspata, whatever how you pronounce that, issued an order inter um, inviting the ACLU of Washington State, severe several news organizations, and the state Washington State Attorney General to file amicus brief addressing six specific questions framed by the district court. The ACLU uh, is... Sarah says beep, 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 beep. <laughs> A nice amount of beeps there. Ah, continuing on. The ACLU's amicus brief first raised possibility of declaratory relief, but even Freud's reply brief to the amicus brief cast the issue of solely in terms of injunctive relief. The parties essentially had no linking, you know, inkling that the district court was silently considering a grant of declaratory relief. We conclude the district court failed to comply with 28 U.S.C. 2403B by failing to notify Washington State Attorney Generals that it might rule on con uh, constitutionality of Washington Revised Codes 9.73.030, which is the wiretap issue. When neither a state nor a, uh, any agency, officer, or employee thereof, uh, employee thereof is a party to an action where constitutionality of a state statute is drawn into question, a federal district court is required to notify the state attorney general and must permit the state to intervene, 28 U.S.C. 2403B. However, no representative of the state of Washington was party to the action. The city of Seattle was not an agency of which the state of Washington for the purpose of this federal, uh, of this federal statute. You're in the conclusion. Fortinus argues that the district court indicates the intent, its intentions in penal, uh, plenty of time for the state of Washington to intervene if the state had so desired. We conclude that such telegraphed intentions are not enough to avoid the duty to provide adequate notice and a formal opportunity to intervene in the, uh, to the state. Because the city's presence in the suit did not satisfy the requirement of 28 U.S.C. 2304 subsection B, and the issue was never certified by the Attorneys General of Washington State, the District Court never had the opportunity to fully hear the views of, Was of Washington State. See, Nunez uh, v. Uh, Arizona, 9th Circuit, 1991. Therefore, the District Court should not have rendered a, the declaratory relief. We also conclude the opportunity to file an amicus brief in no way substantiated for a formal opportunity to participants fully what do I get for drinking carbonated drinks? Fully as an intervening party in the litigation, the opportunity for Washington State Attorney General to participate in the lawsuits was uh, circumscribed along the lines of the jury and verdict. <clears throat> oh, dang it, I forgot to silence my phone. Give me a second here. Do, do, do. Fix that little problem. Continue on. Uh, intervene. The district court abuse. Oh, no, okay. Oh. Okay, Sarah. Winking face. Beep. <laughs> Thank you, Joshua, for all the financial support. I'm going to have to add you to the, uh, like, donation thing and have you on the scroll bar there for the uh, amount of money you've donated to me in the past with through Super Chats. <clears throat> and continuing on. Let's see, the district court uh, discretion oh, okay. was under the consideration by the district court. The state of Washington should have been in, uh, invited to intervene. The district court abused its discretion by not uh, formally extending the opportunity to the state of Washington to intervene in the action. For the foregoing reasons, we conclude that the, although Fortis may have uh, had standing to be eligible for declaratory relief, the district court abused its discretion in failing to provide the state of Washington 
or the city of Seattle an adequate opportunity to be heard when it contemplated granting an unrequested declaratory judgment ruling on the constitutionality of Washington Revised Code 9.73.030. Uh, <clears throat> the conclusion. For the foregoing reasons, we revise and remand the district court's grant of summary judgment as to Officer Ellistar's because a genuine issue of material fact exists concerning Officer Ellistar's alleged assault and battery against Freud's prior to Freud's arrest. We also revise and remand and grant summary judgment as to officers Ellister on the 1983 claim because the genuine issue of material fact exists concerning whether he had interfered with Forrest's First Amendment right to gather news. We affirm and grant uh, the grant of summary judgment as to all individual officer defendants on the 1983 damage, uh, damages claiming uh, claims relating to Forrest's arrest. We affirm and grant summary judgment to the city of Seattle for Forrest's 1983 damage claim. We vacate and remand the, uh, for reconsideration the grant of summary judgment as to the vicarious liability Seattle may have for Forrest's state law tort claims for damages against Officer Ellister. Uh, we vacate and award declaratory relief against the defendants. We do not reach the issue of attorney's fees under 42 U.S.C. 1988, but vacate the two attorney's fees Orders dated night on October 9, 13, 1993, remand those matters to the district court for reconsideration in light of our decision in the appeal. Affirmed in part, revised in part, vacated in part, and remanded. Each party shall bear its own cost. Kink, kink. Bad audio, no interactions. What is my audio going messed up? Did, did I drop? Is my signal dropping out? Checking the chat logs here. There's a guy who calls himself News Now. Am in? Uh, I'll have to check out that, or at least try to look him up. So, any questions? Any opinions on this uh, specific? case we are looking at it seems quite interesting and uh boy that was okay good thanks team mac for a second there i thought i might be uh, messing up i wouldn't be surprised we've had some bad weather in the area in fact we actually had a power outage uh uh that happened i think it... no it wasn't this morning it was yesterday morning with all the uh the snow we just recently got but uh it's quite interesting so uh, Pretty much what the uh, courts decided was we do have the right to film in public, it looks like. But uh, the majority of this case was over how things were improperly done by the district uh, the district court level. And how the procedure wasn't followed and so it caused a lot of the other issues. And so it was just a brief, okay, yeah, you're able to film, reaffirm that you're able to film uh, the police. Alaska, bad weather? No! Well, how should I put it? At least it's not as bad in some other locations, so. Ugh. Let's see here. I'm trying to listen to BB. And I am trying to read in at least an entertaining voice. Alright, so that was quite interesting. But essentially, and this is the law, furthest back I have seen a case cover on the right to film police. All the other cases that I've essentially read up until this point have happened in the last 10 years. And this one happened all the way, I mean, the incident happened in the 1990s and didn't get decided until May of 1995, making this literally the oldest case and leaving it to the ninth circuit to actually be the first one to really nail this one up oh, here comes another super chat <laughs> sarah wanted to interrupt your reading and... sarah wanted to interrupt your reading and i tried to advise her otherwise <laughs> any thoughts tears of joy tongue out <laughs> It seems like she wanted, uh, she didn't want uh, my reading to be interrupted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
All right. <clears throat> Since now we have covered that and we have learned that um, 42 USC, uh, well, CFR 1988 here deals with uh, actual fees and all that stuff. So that is a fun one to learn about. Let us go ahead and take a look at a more recent case that came out of the Ninth Circuit. This was filed, well, and this was filed in August, well, this decision came about August 12th, 2013. And this is Adkins v. Uh, Limtimico, or I'm not even sure how to pronounce it. I'm not, I, I should actually see if I can look up a pronunciation for this real fast. Because I'm, without a doubt, it's going to be, uh, let's see, how to pronounce. See if I can get this one right. Uh, let's see here. And there is no pronunciation, it looks like. Oh. Limshako. Limshako. Hmm. Limshako. 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 <laughs> Okay, so it's pronounced Limshako. 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 Okay, I I'm gonna start using this thing here to figure out what I how to say things. <clears throat> Sarah wants you to talk about all of the beeping going on. Beep 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 you guys have fun with Sarah and trolling her, I see, that's for sure. Dang! We're still, uh, right now we're sitting in the uh, 20s, I think. But uh, we just had a storm pass through and dump a bunch of snow on us. It's going to get cold again this weekend. I don't think it's going to get negative 20. Holy cow, Sarah. I I I've been there, I know how it feels, and I've experienced way colder. Uh, the coldest uh, temperatures I've ever experienced was about negative 102 to 105, right around there. Including wind chill. Needless to say, uh, yeah, uh, you had icicles hanging from your face as soon as you stepped out the door. <clears throat> Alright, so... We deal with Guam police officers. Yes, that's right. Okay. It's been a while since I read this one, so, <clears throat> but, oh wow, this is actually a very short one too. So we're going to be covering two case laws here tonight. Guam police uh, officers, DB Anakis, uh, <laughs> I chop kindling at negative 40. A lot of people chop kindling at negative 40. Uh, continuing on here. Getting back on the court. Uh, Guam police officers, DB and Kenosha, oh boy, why am I getting punished tonight with pronunciations that I have no idea to pronounce here? Okay. Anciano. Anciano. Uh, Sofrino, Arturo, and Paul Suba appeal the district court's uh, denial of. Uh, of their motions to dismiss James L. Atkins' uh, 42 U.S.C. 1983 action. <clears throat> we have jurisdiction pursuant to 28 U.S.C. 1, uh, 1291, and we affirm the district court did not err in allowing Atkins to amend his second amended complaint. Leave to amend should be granted liberally. Uh, yeah, liberally. So as long as it is amended, complaint alleges facts, uh, facts consent with the challenge pleading. See uh, Ready v. Uh, Lighten, 9th Circuit, 1990. The third amended complaint does not conflict with Atkins' earlier complaints or with the other, uh, other documents Atkins filed. Specifically, Atkins' initial allegations that he saw an accident and stopped the photograph it does not necessarily con- uh, contradict his later allegation that he pulled over after seeing an accident but before taking pictures. The district court also correctly denied qualified immunity to Adco and uh, Asiano 
and uh, Atura, we must consider whether Atkins suffered a violation of his constitutional rights and whether those rights were clearly established at the time of his arrest. Uh, Pearson v. Callahan, 2009. Atkins has pled adequately a violation of his Fourth Amendment rights. The officers did not have valid reason to stop Atkins to detain him or order him to turn over his cell phone, to order him out of his car, or to arrest him. Construing the complaints Atkins forever uh, favor, Atkins favor, we must, uh, as we must, it is clear he, that he did not commit a traffic infraction. Pennsylvania v. Mims, 1977, Perkeum, driving with an expired license tag justified initial re, uh, restrictions on respondents' freedoms of movement. Nor did police have a reasonable, uh, reasonable belief that the criminal or otherwise dangerous, uh, uh, reasonable belief that criminal or otherwise dangerous activities was afoot during uh, the city of Douglas, 9th Circuit, 1990. So there was no valid Terry stop. Thus, Adkins had the right to ignore police and go about his business. Illinois v. Uh, Wardlow, 2000. This right was clearly established in October 2009. You know what? I, I need to look this one up. Uh, this Atkins was clearly established to go. These are two. Joshua wants you to beep his asshole. Please beep <laughs> his asshole as soon as possible. <laughs> beep his asshole. You guys are having so much fun with that beep here, aren't you? Okay, I need to look at, take a quick look. These might be important cases I want to look at here in the near future. What, what is this one specifically here? Uh, individually in his capacity. Uh, opinion. Officer, let's see, asserting federal qualified immunity. Okay, this is initial traffic stop. And what was the word low here? Case decided before the United States involving criminal procedure regarding searches and seizures. Yeah, these are going to be two cases I'm going to definitely have to put on the list of eventually covering. <clears throat> While killing cops on Arma 3. You know, I, I have Arma 3 and I have not been able to get that to work properly for me. And I got several of the DLCs too. And there, there's some, it looks like there's a lot of fun with that. I just haven't had the time to check that one out. Ignoring the police sounds interesting. Yeah, that's the part that actually made me stop and pause. This Askin had the right to, uh, right to ignore the police and go about his business. So I, I'm going to have to go and check that one out eventually. <clears throat> Atkins also uh, adequately pled a violation of his fir uh, First Amendment rights. In order to state a claim for First Amendment violation, a plaintiff must allege, one, that there is an engaged, well, he was engaged in constantly prote uh, constitutionally protected activity. Two, that the officer's actions would chill a person's ordinary firmness from continuing to engage in that activity. And three, that the protected activity was substantial uh, substantial or motivating factor in the officer's conduct. Uh, C. Marincindio something whatever uh, V. Marincindio City or County Yeah, I think that's County. Ninth Circuit 1999. Here Atkins alleged he was engaged in constitu constitutionally protected First Amendment activity when he asserted his right to take photos. C. Uh, City of Houston V. Hill 1987, the First Amendment protects a significant amount of verbal criticism and challenges directed at the police uh, at police officers. Oh. I think that's a Supreme Court case too. Atkins also alleged that the officer's actions would chill a person's ordinary ordinary firmness from criticizing the police. Arrest without probable cause is adequate chill. See Beck v. City Up of Upland. Ninth Circuit, 2008. Finally, Atkins alleged that the officer's desire to cause the chilling effect was a but for cause. Silent citizen can't speak with a mouthful of Joshua. I gave him his nickname, throwing kisses, throwing kisses. <laughs> Thank you, Joshua. That is quite entertaining. Uh, it's, it's hilarious how my uh, super chat has now turned into the shit-talking super chat. 
I'm starting to feel like I'm Tonka, uh, Tonka's, uh, uh, what is it, uh, uh, Octagon uh, for his uh, Kumite. Uh, thank you, Richard, for your uh, $5 super chat of blank. Uh, I guess you're just trying to donate. Okay, continuing on. <clears throat> Finally, Atkins. I'll, let's see. Had to send it for the hell of it. Oh, you just wanted to hear the beeping. Okay, I understand completely. Finally, Atkins alleged that the officer desired to cause the chilling effect was but for cause of Atkins' arrest. See Skoog v. County of Clackamas, 9th Circuit, 2006. And there was no probable cause to arrest him. See Raquel v. Howard's, 2012. Atkins' First Amendment rights was clearly established at the time of his arrest. See Hill uh, in reference to Freudius v. City of Seattle, 9th Circuit, 1995. Atkins filed to plead adequately a claim of supervisory liability against Suba. To assert his successful claim of supervisory liability, Atkins must plead that Suba, through his own individual actions, has violated the Constitution. Ashcock v. Liable. Adkins' general allegations of deliberate indifference do not suffice to state a claim, citing Bell, uh, Bell Atkel uh, uh, Corporation v. Tumblr, 2007. See also Star v. Baca, or uh, yeah, Baca, uh, Ninth Circuit, 2011. His two allegations with respect to Soba, Soba's knowledge of the incident. Likewise, do not show that Suba knew or should have known that the police department retained or tampered with Atkins' cell phone after his arrest, or that Suba acquiesced in an unconstitutional arrest for failure to comply. Atkins, according to Atkins, complaint, fall, uh, complaint falls short of allegations found sufficient to the proceeds, uh, proceed on a claim of supervisor liability, Sid Hickens v. Hunter, 9th Circuit, 2012. Therefore, we reverse the district court's finding that the complaint is sufficient to state claim of supervisor liability against Suba and remand for amendment of the complaint. But, you know what? I wonder. Star v. Baca. Is this the same Baca who... We were talking about on Silent Citizens? Um. A thing? Uh, I, I'm very curious now. Order. Let's see. We back up petitions for regarding. Uh, opinion. Background. Third. I'm gonna. Ha Silent. Are you, are you still in the chat? City of Los Angeles County. J oh! Hey, um. Silent, I think we found that uh, L.A. Uh, sheriff guy who got arrested. Incoming super chat. It turns into more shit talking. Oh boy, so uh, we might have some additional fun reading this. Oh boy, we got incoming super chats. Multiples. Where's the beeping? Come on. There it is. Silent citizen blows homeless people for spare change and swallows the gravy throwing kisses throwing kisses. <laughs> oh, what? Okay, what happened to Silent Citizens? Uh, super chat. I didn't read it for some reason. Let's see. Uh, and, uh, there. Joshua Haynes wears Depends diapers but claims to wear Haynes. <laughs> Okay, so, okay, was Lee Baca, is that, okay, let's take a quick look here. Is Lee in this? Uh, for defendant, uh, appeal, I don't know, that's, doesn't say Lee Baca. Uh, it definitely says Baca. We'll have to do some, uh. I'll have to do some more research in that, but that's quite interesting right there that we just might, we were just talking about this guy. We might have found a case, uh, a court case that was created by him. <clears throat> oh, wait, that was it. That was the entire thing. It was six pages. How come the Ninth Circuit is so quick and so 
condensed with their arguments when compared to the Seventh Circuit of, oh my god, 65 pages of reading. But, so, pretty much right here, it, this case was just saying, yeah, you have the right to film police in the Ninth Circuit. So, okay, let's, let's take a look at this case. Okay, let's see if we can actually pull up the... Uh, Actual, oh boy, this is going to be fun. Okay, district court ruling, individual capacity, revised underlying dispute. Uh, can I find, you know, I, I, that's what I need to do. I need to find a Ninth Circuit. Let's see here. Ninth Circuit. I misspelled that. Let's see if I can pull the site. Let's see if we can pull this argument up. Okay, Ninth Circuit Court. Okay, attorneys, opinions, published. Okay. Now, what was this one? Star v. Baca. Uh, uh, oh, wait, we can just, I think we can just enter the, this probably is the case number right here. Okay, so paste this here. Let's see. Uh, okay, no, that's not it. Case or number. Concurring judge. Uh, would this be part of the title? No matching case. Okay, so we'll just try this part here. Case title. Let's see, if I crash on CC's couch, I don't uh, don't get uh, mad, buddy. It won't mean anything, Kate. <laughs> okay, we know it's been published. Or at least it should be. Because uh, I'm really curious. I I'm honestly curious by this. Is this actually a case? Oh, this is actually downloaded. Uh, let's see if I can get this pop up and uh, da, 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 da. ah, I think that's an office. Yeah, docx. Okay, let's. Let's see if we can just try Baca here and case title Baca. Okay, we got a bunch of Bacas here. Oh. I think oh What is this? Uh I think I got a subscriber? Yeah, I think that's a subscriber. Uh let me uh, Let's see here. Uh, studio mode. Uh yeah. Uh thank you Jersey Rick for subscribing. As I continue on here with looking at uh, trying, what this was Star v Baca. Is there a star in here? Boy, Baca's got got several case laws here. Um, we are looking for 2012. This is the only 2012, so it might be this one they're referring to. Ninth Circuit, uh, Juan Robito v. Lee Baca. Uh, but I don't think this is the right case. July 2012. What do they got here? Let's see. This is Ninth Circuit. No, wait. 2011? Oh, wait. I'm in the wrong year. No, but there is no 2011. So, I'm not sure what they're citing here. Maybe it was an incorrect, uh... Uh, lost it. Star v. Baca, Ninth Circuit, 2011. Huh. Still, that is quite interesting. Soba's knowledge, likewise. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to do more in-depth research on that. But uh, let us go back to looking at... 
Let's see. Case decided before the environment criminal procedure. Opinion held that. Uh, let's see. Dissent. Search and seizures. Suspicion to stop because of nervousness, evasive behavior, fleeing high crime area upon noticing. Okay. Oh, Illinois v. Winslow is. Respondent Wardlow flew, seeing caravan of police vehicles converging on an area of Chicago known for heavy narcotics. Let's see. Held officers' actions did not violate. Let's see. Um, you make a stop under Terry v. Ohio. The Supreme Court affirmed determining the uh, that sudden flight in a high crime area does not create reasonable suspicion justifying a Terry Stop because flight may be simply an exercise of the right to go on one's way. See Florida v. Royer. Ah. Okay. So, yeah. So, running away from the cops it, it is legal. Right here. <laughs> if the summary is correct. Um. But what about the ignoring part? That was the actual... Um, for the liberal East, uh, Estrada, wait, cited case is, okay, no, this is just a, uh, do they have the full case reading? Is this it? Plaintiff demanding know why they had tried to flee at the point plaintiff. Okay. So yeah, this, I guess is the full case here. If they don't shoot you. Yeah. You don't want them shooting you in the back. Like that one guy who is like, I'm going to run from the cops. And then the cop chased him, shot him in the back, and then threw his taser down the, right next to him to say, yeah, uh, he went after my taser. So glad that guy got convicted guilty underneath that. <clears throat> so, shall we cover one more case? Oh, wait, how long is this? Um, Actually, I don't think I'll do a full reading of this. That looks to be a lot of reading. <laughs> Holy cow. This looks to be verbose. Yes, this is a very verbose one. Hey, concerned citizens, where uh, where is the Constitution? Haven't talked to you in a while. Been extremely busy, I'm sorry. Uh, I haven't been able to keep in contact with a lot of people. Remember, uh, SC, you will be okay. I'm glad you guys are having fun enjoying the chat within the chat. But this is quite interesting. Oh, you know what? Since we were wanting to have some fun with uh, something here. Let's see here. Let us have some fun with this stream. Since Silent Citizen really, really wanted us to do this. Whatever your idea, host. Okay, host Gator, come on, get done with your advertisement. Of course, every day is special when you spend it with people you love. Now let's sing again. I love you. You love me. We love happy family. With a big, big hug and a kiss, kiss from me to you. you. Won't you, say <laughs> you love me uh, let's see here. Spy team sta uh, Staten, uh, is there or how is the thing going on with the Eugene Courthouse? Um, pretty much the latest update is I filed an official complaint through the uh, U.S. Marshals. Um, they will not further comment on any actions taken and state I have to file a public records request for that information. I just mirrored this. What, mirrored the video or mirrored my, uh, my live stream? Or you took a clip from it so you can have a posting for live stream fails. Oh wait, that's right. Uh, so, uh, Silent Citizen is not, uh, uh, tech savvy enough to know what I'm talking about when it comes to live stream fails. Yes, I am very tone deaf, so I can't sing worth crap. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I, I how should I put it? I had to listen to uh, Barney to some extent. Uh, thank goodness Barney wasn't the biggest part of that. He's like the Snuggleflesh from Sesame Street, doped up on heroin. <laughs> But, um, yeah, how should I put it? When you're looking up uh, various case laws and stuff like that, the opinion PDFs are available on each of the uh, appeal court circuits. If you're figuring or figure out how you pull it up, easy to do if you want to do some of your own research later on in the, the future uh, for all of this. And um, that reminds me, I also want to do a shout out to a certain channel real fast that does the kumite and I hope I hope I have a chance where I, if I have to argue against law, law enforcement or lawyer this is where I want to drag them this ever. is known as the kumite yeah. literally yeah. they bring people in here and they do shit out well go at it with their words arguments and all that stuff all kinds of people have been involved in this and I re recently learned about this, so if I ever have an argument or dispute with a cop or a lawyer or something like that about the law, this is where I'm going to drag him. This is where I want the dragon to, and we can have it out. Oh. Here we go. We got another super chat coming in. See if it gets delayed or not, whatnot. I can't wait to see a silent citizen and a pissed off taxpayer baby. Yummy. Oh, um, yeah, that will be quite entertaining, Josh. Uh, I didn't know, uh, okay, uh, concerned citizen, where is the uh, Constitution? Uh, so the jury trial was set for today. How, uh, any word on, uh, uh, was a decision reached today or is it still ongoing? Oh, uh, and then Silent Citizen asked me about um, News Now Houston's uh, postal video. I I'm pretty sure he's referring to... Why is this still playing? Um, uh, referring to when News Now Houston stated that uh, the post office was a private entity, which uh, many of us dis firmly disagree with. In fact, uh, I was sent a case law that uh, helps dispute that fact with where they argue about... Uh, the post office being a governmental agency. I still need to sit down and take a quick look over that one, but it looks like to be a fun read at some point in the future. But I do agree that uh, News Now Houston was wrong uh, with a few of his statements that he made in that uh, short video there. Uh, Black Coat Media, uh, Felipe, who uh, runs that, he already did a critiquing video correcting a lot of the issues on that. Um, I did make a few statements about that on my last live stream where I pointed out that News Now Houston uh, was pretty much wrong on that and the fact that uh, uh, they are a federal agency and the, uh, how should I put it, the DHS memo applies but the important, what uh, the DHS memo doesn't necessarily uh, state uh, it is the governing factor on that. It is the CFR that is present within the DHS memo, which is all about that. And I point out how the uh, their policy is not in compliance with federal case law in its entirety. There is some valid parts of the uh, actual of the actual uh, policy, but not all of it is valid, which becomes the greater extent of. Uh, how should I put it? Putting together a larger legal brief because it's not an easy to tackle subject. There are some issues that are gray line that there is potential case for uh, losing at least in the initial rounds uh, on the filming aspect with on the inside of the building. But when it comes to outside the building where anywhere the public is allowed to be, you're able to film. If you're standing right, right outside the doors, you can film from there. You can film from the wind uh, outside windows. You can film in the parking lot and all that stuff. That is all covered within uh, uh, within the, the guidelines of the uh, settlement that came about for the DHS memo. And the actual current policy only rules for specifically inside the building, along with the statement of the uh, CFR that covers that issue, states 
uh, that the restrictions are within the building. This also falls in uh, the time place, reasonable time, place, and manner restrictions that are usually set forth for First Amendment kind of activity. Okay, uh, concerned citizen, where is the uh, Constitution? The trial continued. Uh, first jury selection, however, DA just stalling after Feld offered to guilt. Oh, okay, so uh, they're now entering delaying tactics because they don't want to drag it out in front of a jury and that they're still going through jury select uh, jury selection okay yeah it sounds like it's going to be a, a long case and it sounds like the da is trying to uh run out the uh the patience for uh, uh the money and patience for your uh your buddy there hopefully that everything turns out okay but we've had a couple of setbacks in the past couple months um, but as is, we all know, it's been established by the Fifth Circuit that he has a reasonable right to record in public and all that stuff. And <laughs> as soon as this case gets, uh, taken care of the criminal aspect, oh man, the civil case is going to be cakewalk. It'll probably end up just turning into a settlement. Um, they're probably not going to want to see the light of courts with that. Let's see. Uh, Cindy Moore, I heard an auditor was arrested today. Three striker... Anybody know anything? Would you uh, be auditing with two strikes? Um, I'm not exactly sure who you're referring to. I haven't heard about anybody getting arrested, but I haven't been around. Uh, I haven't been really paying too much attention to uh, YouTube per se with uh, uh, people doing con uh, doing First Amendment audits and tests and stuff like that. So I would not really know. Let's see. How long have I been streaming? I have been streaming for about an hour. As is, is there anything else that people want me to answer or cover or take a quick look at? I don't want to do any like major looking at uh, stuff like uh, uh, what is it? Uh, this specific case here with the uh, no, not this one. No. Yeah, uh, this case, liberal uh, via Starta. I'm, I'm gonna have to give this one a, a overlook before I even attempt to read this one. This one's probably gonna be another three hour reading. No offer was accepted due to burden of proof is non-existent. Yeah, I, I have to agree. If uh, they they don't have uh, proof of a crime, uh, obviously they're not gonna hand. It's gonna not go in their favor when the the actual uh, trial hits. Let's see, silent citizen. We can't say much, Cindy. So I guess silent citizen knows more than I do about that issue. And uh, I'll probably get the uh, the fill in later on uh, in the next coming weeks or something like that as more information comes through. And I'm guessing also when they refer to as a three striker, uh, I'm guessing that might be for convictions and getting uh, the three strikes uh, after three stri uh, three convictions to get huge uh, penalties or something like that. In which case, uh, that really depends on that person. You got a kilt to go with that hat? No, I do not have a kilt to go with this hat. I don't even think this is a Scottish looking hat, to be honest. It looks more like a, uh, how should I put it, a British hat. But uh, I'll have to look about getting a kilt. And maybe some bagpipes. And maybe I'll be able to at least play bagpipes instead of singing tone death and uh, causing ears to bleed. I'll just be causing them to bleed in a new manner. <laughs> also, collect your bottle caps. You don't know if the nuclear apocalypse will come. And that was a Fallout 4 reference to those who might not get it. Well, it is a bowler hat. Become a Northwestern douche. Get uh, a kilt. <laughs> a, uh, oh, Utility kilter, up kilt. Spy steam say that, that's uh. I I guess I will have to become a North a Northwestern douche for the kilt. Just don't show us what's under the kilt. I. I'm sure you'll be blinded by what's underneath my wee kilt. Stick to the law, please. I will not stick to the law. 
I will wear my kilt anywhere. I'm not even sure if that's an accurate uh, impression of a, uh, what is it, a Scottish guy. Until I kilt. If you aren't proud, well, if you ain't proud, don't wear one. But I am proud. I will wear one wherever I go. Aye, and you'll see what you don't want to see when I bend down. <laughs> but I'll go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, do, do some final checkouts here. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed yourselves. It's like a squirt on the occult. <laughs> I hope you guys learned a few things. I'll definitely, um, and when this goes live as a video, I will have the, uh, how should I put it? I'll make sure to, are you speaking with a German accent? I don't know if that is German or whatever. Irish hat for sure. No debate. Yeah, I think it's more about an Irish hat. I, I, I have to, I'll have to look up the history of bowler hats, to be honest. No, I'm just speaking with some sort of uh, Northwestern uh, European accent or something like that. That's like a German or Australian or something sexy. <laughs> well, maybe I'll just come up with my own little uh, screwy accent for shits and giggles. At least now you know I am not the only one crazy. Oh, uh, well, I'm uh, not the only crazy one who live streams. Yes, I am not. Uh, yes, you're not the only crazy one that live streams, Silent Citizen. Piccolo and the cane. I don't have to go. Okay, cool. Thanks for, uh, yeah. I'll uh, look forward to your text about the, uh, the court date. Maybe we'll be able to get a bunch of people to come over for uh, support or something like that. That's near you. Also, before I forget... Technoax music is royalty free for you to use. Just gotta give proper attribution. Check him out if you need some music for your channel. He has all kinds of stuff. And I hope you guys have a good evening and enjoy yourselves.